So we're going to start with Arena, who is going to talk about Eats, probably one of the most beautiful presentations I've ever seen. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it to Arena. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Irina, and I'm a software engineer for Uber Eats. In today's talk, we're going to start with a few words about myself and my path to Uber, give you an overview of Uber Eats and how it works as a three-sided marketplace, and then we're going to go behind the scenes to follow an order from the moment a hungry eater opens up the app and places an order until the very end after it gets delivered. Uh, we're going to address the challenges of food delivery, how we tackle them, and the technologies we built to ensure our couriers, restaurants, and eaters love Uber Eats. But first, I have to warn you, all the images of delicious food will probably make you hungry. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I was born and raised in Romania, where I graduated from the Polytechnic University of Bucharest, started my career at Ixia doing operating systems and networking. And then I was at Google for five years doing uh, large-scale distributed systems. More than a year ago, I started a new, uh, I signed up for a new challenge and joined Uber, and I'm happy to be on the Uber Eats team today. What is Uber Eats? Uber Eats was born as a result of, the experimenting, um, of experimenting with different product offerings built into the Uber Rider app. You may have heard of some of them. Uber Rush, the bike courier service, or Uber Fresh, the food delivery service that was offering pre-made meals in limited quantities. We learned a lot from these um, experiments and we decided to branch out of the Rider app and open up the platform for all the restaurants to build the Uber Eats you know today. Our learnings also helped shape the mission we have today, make eating well effortless every day for everyone. Needless to say, the app today offers a richer visual experience, better tailored for uh, food delivery. Uber Eats was built on the shoulders of the giants as we were able to leverage much of the uh, existing technology stack of the ride sharing side. We're a global business running in more than 200 cities in over 85 countries around the world. And what gets me personally excited, besides food, I mean, who doesn't get excited about food, is that we're helping people get the food that they want while enabling couriers to make money and restaurants to reach more people and better serve their customers. Here at Uber, we often use the term marketplace because the dynamics of Uber relate to the economics term of market. By definition, a marketplace is a system or entity that facilitates the trade and distribution of goods between multiple parties in exchange for payment. The ride-sharing side is a two-sided marketplace because driver partners are offering transportation services to the riders. Eats is a three-sided marketplace because we introduced a new entity in the picture, the restaurant. As you can see, the exchange is not bidirectional anymore. It follows a triangle pattern. Uber Eats sits in the middle, and we built technologies to interface with all these three parties. And as you'll see in the next slides, the dynamics are much more challenging and complicated just because more can go wrong. And now let's go behind the scenes and see how it all works. Each order goes through four phases, discovery, order creation, fulfillment, and post-fulfillment. Discovery refers to finding the restaurant you want in the personalized feed. Order creation refers to choosing the items you want and placing the order. Fulfillment and post-fulfillment refer to what happens afterwards, food preparation, pickup and delivery, and payments. And we're going to deep dive into each of these phases and see what's challenging and what was critical for us to get right. We know that discovery was extremely important, but also tricky. Eaters want a large selection to choose from, but if the pool of options is too large and hard to navigate, it can create some anxiety of choice. That's why we had to get discovery right and make it as simple as possible. You have here some images of the main feed. We've structured it in a way to include favorites and recommendations in the form of horizontal carousels, followed by a list of restaurants sorted by relevance. These components are built as a UI platform, allowing the server side to configure the results in a meaningful way. It also allows us to do rapid experimentation and testing, which is critical for us to improve our product. Each user has a different experience of the feed, personalized based on their needs and interests. We use machine learning models to optimize for either satisfaction in the form of conversion and retention. Some of the signals we use are the user's history and previous orders, preferences, 
um, categories of, and labels of food, location, and time of day. The backend is mainly um, based on a microservices architecture written in Golang, mainly written in Golang. Uh, we use Elasticsearch as a, the open source storage and search engine to power our geospatial queries. And we also use an in-house machine learning as a service platform called Michelangelo for building, deploying, and operating our machine learning solutions at scale. For details, check out the end blog post. Now let's move on to the second step, building your cart. Sometimes building your cart is as easy as choosing which macaroons you want. Other times, menu items have many customizations and options, and we needed to support all of this because creating the perfect pizza or burger is possible. Now, the user chose what they wanted to order and hit the place order button. Let's see what happens next. The restaurant interfaces with the platform through the restaurant dashboard, a single web page application accessed through tablet devices. In here, the users can see, the restaurants can see um, orders coming in, accept them, can manage their menus, make any necessary adjustments, as well as see which couriers have to pick up which order and so on. Our main goals for the delivery part of fulfillment were, first of all, we wanted to enable couriers to make as many deliveries as possible. For that, we are batching orders and we're also dispatching in an intelligent way to minimize for wait time, the wait times. We also wanted to accommodate different transportation vehicles besides cars. We want to accommodate things like scooters or bikes or even people who deliver by foot. We wanted to provide accurate ETAs because nobody likes to wait for their food. They kind of want to know when it's going to arrive. We wanted to ensure reliability and 24-hour support so that if anything goes wrong, we have our courier, eaters, and restaurants back. And then let's not forget, we didn't want the food to arrive cold. Many Uber drivers, uh, driver partners, do both rides and food deliveries. As such, it made sense to reuse the same driver app and have it dispatch for both types of offerings. However, food deliveries are very different than just picking up uh, a rider. They oftentimes require parking at the restaurant and the eater side. Here are some examples of how the navigation in the driver app has been augmented with additional information to help guide the courier to get to the exact locations. While the eater is waiting for their food, they get to know exactly what's going on with their order. We built a fluid delivery experience that uses push messaging to update in real time key UI elements such as ETAs, order status, and courier position. So now the food is ready and the courier that was dispatched gets to the restaurant and picks up the food. Here are all the things that ha they have to do until they drop off the food. I'm not going to go through all of them. I just wanted to give you an idea of the fact that it's much more complicated than it actually seems. And there are lots of places things can go wrong. And now let's talk about what happens after the delivery has been done. We all know what happens with the food. It disappears. While the eater is enjoying their meal, Uber Eats is taking care of payments, billing the eaters, charging the restaurant, charging the eaters, paying the restaurant and couriers, and sending out receipts and invoices. We also ask all parties to rate their experience so we can improve our product even further. And lastly, uh, we built the Restaurant Manager, a web analytics tool for restaurants to make data-driven decisions to better serve their customers. We provide insights into customer satisfaction, sales statistics, and quality of service. And that's a wrap. As you can see, a lot of things happen from the tap of a button to taste buds. But we're only getting started. Uber Eats as a food platform is only two years old. 2018 is going to be a great year as we continue to scale and expand around the globe and impact more people's lives.